Hello guys, welcome back to another video here on my channel and today is tutorial again. In today's video we will discuss some different bases, not just one different style, we will discuss a ring base, a box base, because box bases are really popular in the High Legends, so we go through that one and I will explain you the Lalo part in a little better or deeper explanation. If you're new to this channel, um, don't forget to like and subscribe and now have fun with the video. Here is the first ring base and on such a base there is a typical ring base as you can see and in bases like these there is always good step values. And you see in this base you can have two scatters and a rage tower or you can go for two expos rage tower or for the expo rage tower and multi or for the monolith um, inferno tower and the expo you see there is a lot of good value here <coughs> but what i prefer in this space is of course go for the set down here because it not only gives you good value but it gives you a good path as well. After that, you have very easy way to funnel for your heroes. If you take down this air, uh, um, ground bow, there is nothing really that can damage your heroes. You see, I'm taking down this expo and now you have very easy, easy funnel. You see, I'm trying to take down these two buildings just for my queen but the mortar went down the wizard tower not quite but you see it's after that very easy i can just place my queen and i know she will she will walk down here and will walk up here again she won't turn down here and go to the king because we took down these buildings with the steps and very new to the game is the frozen arrow. I can only recommend this to your Sui and to your Queen. Level up that really quickly. And if you are asking, I'm having the giant gauntlet on level 23, the rage on the king on level 17, the queen, the frozen arrow level 17 as well, invisibility on level 18, and the warden is important as well. Um, I use the norm normal equipments and on the Royal Champion as well. At the moment I am try to go for the Frozen Arrow to level 21 and then I will go to, back to the Giant Gauntlet to level up to max because it's just way stronger. Personal preference but yeah. You see, my queen can funnel very easy with this building gone. And now we can play the king. I send it in here a baby dragon because it's just, if we take down this building, it's a hundred percent sure that the king will walk in. The royal champion will um, take the king into the middle core as well. And what my goal is with my Sui is to get this sweeper because if I get this sweeper there is no sweeper against me through the whole backhand so my Lolo has a very easy path sadly my, uh, the ground expo locks onto my queen just for a moment now on the unicorn and now the CC is coming out and you see the RC the enemy RC pulling in the king and now we can pop his ability and with this ability we get a huge value out we get into the middle core triggering this rage tower here and even i think that one as well yes right in a second yeah now and now you see it's an l shaped again if you have if you have this one like here and we have the blimp for the top and you see the blimp will land between those 
those two scatters and the town hall. And we can rage up over the whole section here. So the Yetis can get down the town hall and both scatter shots and maybe even get down this archer tower down here or the enemy queen. But huge value for our blimp. And you see the Lolo is a very wide path. It's not a small path. And that's why I'm sending in more loons than usual. You see, I only have 10 loons left and only one lava hound. In such base like this, you can, um, don't worry, you can send in two lava hounds. It doesn't really matter. And I even sent it in a third one as well. And you see, I'm hissing above very many buildings. And the loons go from building to building. And it's very important if the, um, the haste covers as many buildings as possible. So the loons go from building to building and if every building is in the haste, they will get hasted from every building to building. So very important on that. And always rage um, your blimp. <clears throat> and you see, easy getting this down. And with this tornado, uh, with this tornado trap, we get getting here this um, arch tower as well and the queen taking down the yetis but it should be no problems we have four headhunters left and yeah they die unfortunately but here's the owl I have a lot of questions um, which are asking me if you should take the diggy on the worry and for me the owl is way better. Like for examples right here. If we won't have the owl, the queen would stand all the time. Of course, it probably wouldn't have matter, but if there are some, some less loons, or I don't know, but this can really hurt. So that's why I'm still taking the owl. Or if we lure the enemy CC, with our grand or with our lolo and there are some headhunters that are running to my warden nothing will kill them so definitely use the owl and not the diggy of course the diggy is a good pet as well but at the moment i'm still thinking that the owl is better in lolo but yeah you see the space is easy clutch can speed it up here and yeah now we are looking at the next base coming here to a diamond base and this diamond base is looking very weird I would say because it has a very deep core or a very uh, core with like no buildings near around and on such a base I was thinking a long time what should I sell because there is like of course there is some value these two um, expos or the other ones or this archer tower this uh, infernal tower or you can go for the scatter and the queen but I decided to went for these through three buildings and the reason for that is for the puffing i recognized that around the town hall there is no threat to the lolo so only the town hall and these two poison towers um, but expos doesn't hurt your lolo especially if they are are on ground so that's why my thought was from the beginning i will lolo through the town hall and you see down here on the eagle side, there is, um, I would say, uh, very less damage. So no ricochet cannon, no expo, and no infernal tower, except of these two. But, you know, single infernos are not that hard to counter with a skeleton sp spell or something like that. Um, but what I did is, like I said, these three buildings I went with the set and with a flame flinger for 
this scatter right here. You see there is no threat against your flame flinger as well, except this one mortar right here. And yeah, that's why I went for this right here on the side with the flame flinger, taking out this cannon and now tanking the mortar with the giant and sending in some loons. And the reason why I went for the giant right here is because if I would would um, just put in some archers like this one, the archer tower just would kill the archer and your flame flinger is unprotected again. So that's why I went for the with the giant. And always um, send in your flame flinger before you zap just to save some time. And now I go with the zaps in. And you see I went with this mortar right here as well, just because it cannot hurt to get more value out of the zaps. And yeah, and you see we have now a clear clear way for our heroes. It's now very easy to funnel ag uh, again for them because there is no building behind the walls. So your queen will always walk the right way. And a very interesting factor as well is I went with the flame flinger on the RC side is because the RC have a little, uh, I think one tile less range than the queen. So that's why I went with the flame flinger on the RC side. And that's always the case. If you cannot zap the queen and want to flinger uh, around a hero, always take the RC side because it's just, you see, the queen, the queen's range is over the wall and the RC's range is not. And um, just a little detail, just that you know that. And now I'm funneling with some archers, not really interesting. Now sending in my queen and because of these steps I know my queen will walk down to the king. And I want to wall break here but I saw that the warden is right here. So that's why I sent it in so uh, a goblin to tank for the for the goblin uh, for the wall breaker to get the wall break. Sometimes that, that can really hurt you. And now the king taking out with some with a headhunter. The king unfortunately didn't walk in, but it isn't uh, that big of a problem. And now you can see we can get very good value with our heroes. You see this side is out, the eagle compartment will get taken out by the queen, the inferno will be taken care of by the king and so on and now the only thing that stands is this thing right here the bottom side and the town hall and now i'm lolling through the through the town hall and what i what i always do in a lolo just every building going in with three to four maybe even five loons for each building and because I want to go into the town hall and not around the town hall, that's why I start with a lolo from, or a little lolo from the side here as well. And because the time was um, not the best, so I had to hurry a little bit. But yeah, that's why I came in from this side as well, that my lolo go straight, straight to the town hall. And now you see it's just these two buildings and they are not really good against your Lalo. And I think there was a really fast Lalo, I think less than one minute or something, I don't know. But yeah, coming here to the last base. And this is a double rage box base because someone asked me for a crack on double rage box bases. And first of all, I need to say there are a lot of version and so that's why I just took that one and on this base there is very good self value 
And you see, you can set out the scatter, the rage tower, the multi archer tower, and this inferno tower here. But I actually didn't went for this set, and I went actually for the expo, the multi archer tower, and the rage tower. And the reason for that is just because of the flame flinger value. If we can place a flame flinger down here on the bottom, we can get out this multi right here. Because this back end multi can make a lot of trouble, especially in low attacks. That's why I really like to take it out very early or with the flame flinger. But this expo is in the way. And I went for these three buildings because the Inferno Tower and the Scatter I still can get with my King. Because if we would have taken out this, these four buildings right here, there is not that much value rest uh, or left for you King. So that's why I went with the steps for that one and the enemy Queen as well. You can take it out with your, with your um, King. So yeah, you can speed it up. And the rest of the attack is normal, I would say. If you do this approach, we sending in the queen for the town hall, especially with the frozen arrow, the king is no problem. And on this base, there was an accident because you will see right now, there is a Tesla popping uh, up here on my flame flinger. And it was already too late. And that means we do not get the Inferno Tower down here. But I mean, it's maybe not even bad to show uh, uh, an attack where not everything is going as planned. But yeah, just as you know, in the future, always test for some Teslas. And yeah, you see the King will get down these buildings and with the ability maybe even the scatter as well and with the with the frozen arrow on the queen you're getting the, the king easily down without the headhunter um, luckily the phoenix actually got the, the scatter shot the queen taking the tunnel and now I'm starting the lava and you see this is a very small party and that's why I send it in some loons of course for this archer tower and for this cannon and this loons on this outside should go to the to the uh, wizard tower and often to the cannon and just um, press these main loons into the core like in the middle that's why just I'm spreading them a little bit you see beautifully but this is just with practice you get better at that and yeah you see beautiful warden ability taking in some headhunter as well for the royal champion and now we don't send the royal champion in with the lolo we send it in on this ricochet cannon and for this multi. Just because the flame flinger didn't get it, if the flame flinger would have got it, we could have sent it in on the eagle. But as you can see, even with the flame flinger is, is going down early, this is still clutch. I mean, the royal champion has still full a bit full health, and there are many loons, and the queen as well still alive. But yeah. And guys, that was it with that video for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we see us in the next video.